Good morning and a warm welcome. I, Ms. Tandi Rani, on behalf of the Department of Microbiology and Biotechnology of Parker Alde College, warmly welcome you all to the guest lecture on molecular diagnostics. I extend a warm welcome to our Chief Coordinator, Mrs. Ruchita Dalvi. I also welcome our speaker for today's session, Mr. Suresh Pujari. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce our speaker today. Sir is a research assistant at Kastrapa Hospital, Mumbai. He has worked at junior scientific, as junior scientific officer at Eye Genetics uh, Diagnostics, Mumbai. Sir has completed post-graduation in biotechnology from the University of Mumbai. He has completed his graduation in biotechnology from Patkar Bharde College. We welcome you, sir, and it is an honor to have you amongst us today. Before we begin with the session, a few instructions to the participants. I request all the participants to be kindly patient if any technical problem arises during the lecture. We will try to resolve all the technical glitches. Kindly mute the audio for smooth conducting of the session. If you have any questions, post it in the chat box. It will be answered at the end of the session. Please maintain the record of the lecture. Sir, I request you to begin the session. Over to you. Hello. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Ruchita Miss and the management of SLS Patkar for giving me the opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here and to interact with my juniors. Today, I'm here to share my expertise and experience in the field of molecular diagnostics. I am associated with Kasturba Hospital for more than two years. I'm working here actively involved in COVID testing, kit development, validation, and QC of all the labs of Mumbai and involved in surveillance of Zika as well as COVID along with Lepto, Dengue, H1N1, Scrub Typhus. Hello. Everyone is audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. I would like to share the flow of today's session. I will be sharing a PPT. The flow will be the concept in molecular diagnostics, few examples, few advantages, scope, and reflection in molecular diagnostics. Let's begin with the concept of molecular diagnostics. What is molecular diagnostics? It is a collection of techniques used to analyze biological markers in the genome and the proteomics in human, animal, or plant. It's a well advanced technology which is being mostly used right now due to COVID for molecular diagnostics. Usually it was analytical testing. Previously, mostly it was used for analytical, analytical testing. I would like to know, does anybody have any idea what are molecular techniques which you have learned right now in BSc and MSc? Anybody would like to answer that thing? We'll make this session a little bit interactive session with student as well as faculty as well. Anybody can answer. Okay, I'm getting few answers from Anushka Patil, PCR, PCR. Other than PCR, anybody know what are the molecular testing techniques? I'm not talking about diagnostic, molecular testing. Yes, microarray. Oh, 
ओके आई विल टेल यू फ्यू मोर थिंग इन सुटा फ्लोरसेंस हाइब्रिडाइजेशन कैरियो टाइपिंग दिस आर ऑल द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ मॉलिकुलर टेस्टिंग ओके सो वी विल बिगिन विथ अवर स्लाइड I had already given you what is molecular diagnostic. It is a laboratory test used to identify disease or predisposition to a disease by analyzing the DNA or RNA or protein in human or in case of infection due to microorganism. This can be used for both human as well as animal as well as plants. We can test for anything using the DNA and RNA of the sample. So why is to use molecular testing to diagnose an infection? What are the key questions you can ask in that? Is the body healthy? What disease is the patient at risk? Mathematical market capital right now. So, to need an accurate and timely diagnosis, important for initiation of proper treatment, important for prevention of spread of contagious diseases. The best example for this will be H one N one and COVID and SARS related infection, which are respiratory viruses, which easily spread. and that is very contagious and right now everybody is aware that due to covid 19 you might everybody know that the basic test or which is a gold standard pcr that is real time pcr is being used for this diagnosis of covid 19 so areas of molecular diagnosis i am sure everyone will be concerned about their career after completing msc or bsc what field you can go a uh, molecular diagnostic has a very vast areas you can select that include in areas you can work for your after completing your bsc or msc the areas which i was talking about it was infectious disease in molecular testing molecular oncology test for basically cancer research and everything inherited disease in her inherited diseases for molecular testing identity By testing for that is basically DNA fingerprinting, HLA typing for tissue transplant or for any kind of transplantation, and parthenogenesis uh, genetics testing that is it is the latest one, which is in molecular diagnostic used for study the drugs or we call as designer drug for particular specific patient we can design a drug for testing that. we'll be talking about infectious disease in molecular testing this involves the design of selected a uh, small nucleotide small basically small oligonucleotides of dna primers probes that are directed against the specific sequences of virus bacteria or parasite basically we look for a specific and confirmatory gene which are very unique to a specific organism or a family of organism we are looking for a specific type of viruses because right now if you take sars cov2 it has a family of more than five types which are infectious to human and other 200 to 400 types are which are not infectious to human but they are infectious to animals like hku1 that is a i am talking about corona virus right now hku1 nl63 sars mers and right now the sars cov2 they belong to a same genus and same family if you want to identify specific i want to look after covid 19 so there are set of specific se sequences which are very unique to sars cov 2 so basically the whole genome sequence is already been in the on the internet you can find the whole genome of that so you will design a specific primer and probe that will target and give me that this is the perfect organism which i am looking for 
So when you take a sample of a patient and test for it, basically involving your DNA probes and primer, which are specific, if the probes and primer bind to the target site, it will give you a fluorescence. Then it is a confirm that the patient is infected with SARS-CoV-2 or any interested if you are interested in other viruses, bacteria, parasites or fungi. So this can be used for infection for uh, tackling infectious diseases. You can use whatever which are known sequences you can use to test that organism. Second one is molecular oncology testing. It is basically it is used to detect cancer causing mark cancer cancerous cells. If the patient is suffering from any kind of deletion mutation, which can result in cancer, uh, mostly for breast cancer, it is BRCA1. EPC genes are looked after if they are present in the gene. In molecular oncology testing, there are two tests which are basically used to detect if the patient is suffering for cancer, cancer or not. That is by PCR as well as next generation sequencing. Next generation sequencing is a time consuming, consuming, expensive as well as, and it required a high uh, setup and it is more costly. Uh, but PCR you can use. So basically they look for only specific, they don't go for the whole genome sequence. They only uh, target for a specific sites, which are their interests like BRCA1, I had already told you. So the cost, in molecular diagnostic cost and the time is very important. If you want to detect and if it's taking a lot longer time, there is no use of testing that sample. So they mostly go for PCR testing. Right now, real-time PCR is in high demand because in conventional testing, it takes a lot of time. After you have prepared your sample, you will run the sample in conventional PCR, then you will load the sample, chances of contamination, visualization, and you need, you need more expertise in that thing. But in real-time PCR, it Every, in the real time, you can see the graph or the curve in direct computer if the patient is positive or not, if the presence of gene is there or not. Inherited diseases molecule, in, in this now we basically look for if there any deletion, mutation, point mutation is there. So in this, the basically NGS is used, next generation sequencing is used to check because in this thing, we have to check for the whole genome if there is deletion or mutation is there. If the patient will have this like Down syndrome, Turner syndrome. And one more thing I would like to add that in this now, uh, we look for in suta, fluorescent hybridization, karyotyping to check if there is genetic mutation in the cell or not. To look after the cost effectiveness as well as. DNA fingerprinting, or this is the forensic tools which are used to solve crime. Basically, you might have already studied in this your chapter as well as for DNA fingerprinting. For parent, parent, um, parents testing if the uh, child belongs to the same parents or not, monitoring bo bone marrow transplant. In that field, we can use DNA fingerprinting. The next one is tissue type testing, that is HLA typing or histocompatibility testing. This is a blood test. Measures the substance called as antigen on the surface of body cells and tissue. Uh, basically, we check for if the patient sample or recipient and donor samples are compatible or not, if the blood transfusion can be taken or the tissue transplantation can be done or not. That In that case, we do a HLA typing in which we check for all the antigens or the marker which are present on the surface of the blood as well as on the tissue they are compatible or not or how what are the medicine which are required for immunosuppression so that the body should not attack their own cell or or reject the donor tissue or blood then uh, the next step is pharmacogenetic testing this is the newest area which has been uh, popularized. Which is the newest area in this field in molecular testing in which it is priorly tested with the patient sample. Basically, they inoculate the cells, take out the culture, the cells in the lab, and they check for the medicine. If the patient will be com 
compatible with that medicine and the patient will not show adverse effect or any kind of thing so in this field the pharmacogenetic testing is done as well as the drugs which are coming to the market or it will come in the future so that will be mostly depend on personalized medicine because every person react to every substance differently some medicine suits to some people and some doesn't suit to other people so that's why it is a, a vast uh, this is a very new field right now so basically more r and d is going on in this field right now we will go into the advantages of molecular testing molecular testing or molecular diagnosis give you high sensitivity towards traditional testing in this false positive or false negative chances of getting is very low you can if you are testing a sample and you can't give a result that you are positive and it was a false positive case so in if you are going with traditional testing there are chances of getting false positive as well as false negative depending on the parameter of patients or what are the uh, technician who is doing the test and uh, and theoretically can detect the presence of single organism because you can there are various panels giving a single sample you can test for various organism there are various panel for like if you want to test for a patient is having a cold flu and you want to test which type of virus or bacteria is involved in that you don't have to collect multiple sample for that thing or uh, you will be taking a site specific sample if you are looking for a respiratory virus is it basically cold and flu is a respiratory infection so you will be looking for a respiratory virus you take a sample of the patient from respiratory tract either from nasal swab throat swab throat sputum bronchial alveolar wash or biopsies of lung is okay and you test a single sample for a vast organism the which are involved in respiratory virus so you don't if you go for a mole in molecular testing it you will design a particular probe and primer which will go in multiplexing that in one reaction you can detect more than one type of organism if they are present that too they don't need to be a specific and like they don't belong to a specific family but they will be different you can detect at the same time if you go for microbiology testing you have to culture that thing you have to prepare different plate different biochemical test it will take a lot of time the culture have to grow if the in case if the viral infection you can't grow it in a lab so in this case it will give you high sensitivity that you can detect a single organism and after that detecting the doctor can prescribe a specific medicine for specific type of disease i already told you that is high specificity yes now you can determine drug resistance in case of bacteria uh, this is basically you is used in tb patient who are already resistance to certain class of drug uh, if the patient has already taken and not completed a course and the infection reoccurs the drug doesn't work on that patient you have to change the drug composition time dosage and everything so you can take a sample and directly test that sample if the uh, patient sample the organism is, which is you are taking is already drug resistant or not so you don't have to give the drug which will not work in that case or like rifampicin resistant we check for rifampicin in tb and various streptococcus aureus and everything can be determined for drug resistance basically this is used for only microbes as a right now it is been using for viruses for hiv testing is to, to check if the patient will respond to the drug if the patient is taking a drug for a longer time the organism usually become drug resistant and the drug will won't help it will only deteriorate the patient's health so in this case the pcr test is used or rt pcr test is used to check if the organism already have the presence of drug resistance genes in its genome 
and according to that we can design or prescribe the patient other medicine now it can predict the virulence you already know that our sars cov already have been more than four five mutation a delta lambda right now we are have, uh, facing with omicron mutation so it can predict if the organism is in future it will mutate and can cause, cause virulence factor so in right now we are looking for let's like, take an example of omicron mm, in this the surface mutation mu there is a surface mutation in this viruses basically in the s gene there are more than 10 to 15 mutations basically making it more virulent because the already vaccine or the patient, patient who had already been infected and their antibodies will won't work on this because the uh, virus structure is already being changed so the antibodies as well as vaccine will become less effective you need to design better vaccine or you can study and predict if the if in future it will give more other type of virulence or other type of mutation that can be studied by taking ng uh, ngs into consideration because pcr won't help on identifying this thing but ngs is required to check the whole genome and can predict if in future these are the sites which can give the virus a more virulence factor right now we are talking about the uh, speed quicker than traditional culturing for certain organism i already told you that molecular testing is done because it is a very less time consuming less haptic and the results are very high sensitive and high specificity the results are very good you don't have to rely on traditional method right now basically in few cases right now still because traditional culturing method is not feasible for viruses i already told you fungi because there can be contamination on the plate if you have prepared a plate the method of culturing is not proper temperature and in everything or if you are looking for anaerobic organism you have to maintain all that thing but you can if the patient sample is uh, collected and directly tested you can say that this many organisms are present in that you can look for which are the natural flora of the cell and which are not or mutated one or which are the virulent one and the simplicity some assays are now automated basically right now most of the assays are automated by automatic machines which are made by abbott thermo fisher kaizen they had already made their present in molecular diagnostic field and they had made already automatic machine you do you don't need have to do anything in that you have to just put the patient sample load the cartridges and everything will be done by the machine including analysis and it will give you the result and you will come to know that it is positive negative and the chances of error in this is also very much low you can say very low means there is no error in that it's already automated process and it is well tested and it is very simple compared to doing traditional you don't require much mm, uh, additional setups you just need a very good uh, pcr lab which has should have a unidirectional flow and you can do the assay easily now we'll go into the conclusion what is the conclusion if molecular testing it has vast field medical and research field depend on molecular diagnosis molecular diagnosis like it has been already pcr is already been in research for a very long period of time but now it has come into patient's diagnosis testing basically for patient sample visually used to do for the uh, viral cultures bacterial culture or fungal culture to look after if the gene of interest is present or not and the era of next generation sequencing it's a brand new it's a brand new era where most next generation sequencing is done to check for the whole genome of the organism back of bacteria fungi including human of which is already been cloned it is been used in medical as well as research field 
depend on molecular diagnostic testing basically more research is going on developing new kits new techniques in the pcr to detect the target organism in less time more accurately more specific and sensitive way and the next one is the next generation sequencing it is a little bit time consuming but in recent year due to very good technical as well as a uh, good research work is going on on this so the next generation sequencing technique has become little bit faster like instrument like illumina and thermo fisher have developed latest machine which can sequence the sample in less than 2 days or 3 days maximum and you can get your output result and after that you have to do just do the technically analysis part to check for any mutation deletion or any new sequences to identify new organism or any kind of thing and the third or the last is microchips and microarray this is the end of the ppt presentation and anybody if have any doubt they can ask me i had made this pre presentation very short because there are vast things so which i can't cover right now because i am short of time so anybody have question they can put it in the chat box i will try to answer them so is there any doubt or any question anybody like to ask yes students if you have any questions please put it in the chat box there is one question one question, one question. Kit, yeah. kit development, development and particular and design how we measure the accuracy of the kit or oh, basically before development developing a kit if you are selected a organism like if you want to detect streptococcus pneumoniae or covid 19 or any other organism so before you look into the genome you will look up to a particular gene which are very specific to that organism in in ncbi you will blast the sequence and look for a specific primer and probe sequence you have to design that thing you have to design the primer and probe once the primer and probes are designed you will prepare a, a flow of test like your temperature your controls yes you have to design the your assay pcr assay what are the condition will be required basically you have to first standardize the test if the kit will work or not after standardization the kit you have to check for pos known pos positive samples known negative samples and cross reactivities with other organism so basically you will select more than 5 to 10 organism you will check the kit with that organism if it is giving you a false positive if you are develop a kit for covid 19 but it is giving showing positivity for bacteria or other viruses the kit is of no use then you have to redesign the probes and primer and condition and check again once your kit is finalized the kit will go for scrutinization for a quality kind of basically it will go to the icmr so they will validate your kit that it is the kit is of use or not they will check again 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 with the positive sample known 20 positive 50 positive or 100 positive 100 negative sample and they will check if the negative sample also comes positive 
or is there any in conclusion in that thing and after that when your kit is passed then only it can go into the market or you can sell it like that way and the next question is there any research taking place that would make the pcr based sm it is already being done by various indian startup companies have been already in doing that thing and they are right now in the market as well if you are heard a uh, few uh, like there are few companies which are like uh, there are some indian companies like my lab it was the first one to develop a pcr kit which was very cost effective right now you can test a single sample for less than 250 rupees that is the most affordable thing one can develop after doing profiting on that and basically the cost will be 100 to 150 rupees for a per test the research is, that research is already been done that's why the cost has come down for if you go for in usual day if you want to test a pcr test for a sample or for any organism it used to cost you around 5000 3000 4000 depending on the organism right now if you go for a covid testing it is hardly less than 600 that too with a real time kit huh? is there any molecular technique of diagnosis of covid except rt pcr because rt pcr is considered as a gold standard right now so there is no other test uh, basically antigen testing is done uh, that is uh, rapid kits are being developed which you test for covid 19 but the accuracy is uh, less and the sensitivity is less so basically if you the antigen positive it give the patient is positive but the negative if it shows negative still you have to te test with pcr to confirm that patient is negative what is the criteria of selection of biomarker in molecular diagnosis uh, as i already told if you are developing a kit or selecting an organism you have to look for a, a particular set of marker which are unique to the organism if you design a primer which can give you positive for all the organism it will make no sense if you are look into the i am talking about the atgc composition of the dna if you are looking for that thing so the sequence or the set should be very particular to that particular organism that is the main criteria for selection of biomarker in molecular diagnostics uh someone posted a question on career field in okay uh special courses uh i will say there is no need for doing special courses courses in this it's better you do an internship in some of the lab if you go for online courses that will be all will be theoretical part but if you want to build a career you look into internship doing in some of the molecular lab labs which are involved in molecular diagnostic you can contact any of of the lab because right now they need people and they will easily train you and you will get your experience and you can come to know that you can work in this field or not so there is no need to spend extra money after doing your bsc and msc on this special courses they are already scam so always look for an internship if you are want to build your career as soon as if you have a vacation or you have a part you have a free time you can contact few labs that you want to do some ex experience uh, you can join an intern in their company for few months few days i had started my career as an internship for two months i had done a two month internship in a lab after completing my msc thank you any more questions
Okay. Um, I think we are at the end of the question answer session. Um, okay. Just a second. So I would like to thank uh, Mr. Suresh. Uh, it was a very informative session. So as we end the session, I would also like to thank Dr. Ka Mala Kharkar, CEO, and Dr. Shrikant B. Savant, Principal of Patkar Varde College, for their constant support. I also thank our Chief Coordinator, Mrs. Ruchita Dalvi, and Co-Coordinators, Mrs. Anupama Tomar and Mrs. Neha Kolaso, as well as my colleagues for their constant support. I wholeheartedly thank Mr. Suresh sir for enlightening us with the importance of molecular diagnostics as well as taking out time from his busy schedule. Lastly, a big thank you to all the participants for participating in the session. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you all the faculty for inviting me here and all the students. Yes, thank you sir. Thank you.